Hi guys, it is April from Getting Hugo With It. I have an unhaul for you. I am unhauling 10 books off of my shelves. These are all books that I've either read and it just didn't meet the mark for me, or I didn't have them. So let's get into it. <music> So first up, we're going to go with the DNF. And I got a lot of comments about Jodi Picoult, and a lot of people were like, just try another book. I will never try her again. I know that a lot of people love Jodi Picoult, and I'm not judging anyone who does. Um, she is not for me. I think she's a very bad writer from what I read, and I'm not going to pick her up again because I really, really found her writing super cliche. And... Um, it, it might be a motive. Like I know a lot of people read her because she she creates these dynamics in these stories where you know you you're supposed to think one thing about someone and then she gives you another scenario. She gives you really complicated scenarios um, and asks you to keep an open mind. That's not what I have a problem with. It's literally her writing style. So because of that, it doesn't matter if her. Her stories are like the best stories in the world. I cannot get past her writing style. It just makes me really mad and I'm so excited to get this out of my house. Why did I start with this? I'm gonna get so many hate comments or like angry comments. Um, the Romanov Sisters is another book that I read um, and I enjoyed this. This is literally about the Romanovs. I knew nothing about Russian history before I read this, like nothing. Um, I'd heard of the Romanovs, but that was it. Like I didn't know where they were from. I didn't know it was even Russian history and that's really embarrassing. But I, I dove in deep with this. This is a nonfiction book all about the children. Um, um, who met a very untimely and unfortunate death um, due to the Russian Revolution. And uh, I enjoyed it. It was just a little too long for me. It just felt like, oh, is it ever going to end? Like, I also think because these girls weren't really doing a hell of a lot in their lives, it, it, it just didn't seem to need to be this long. 365 uh, pages I think was too long. If it was 300 I think I would have liked this more. It was just slightly too long. Um, but I am open to reading more about the Romanovs and the Russian Revolution in particular. I feel like now I've got a good sense of their perspective and I'd like to see more about the Russian Revolution itself. Um, so yeah, I enjoyed it, but it's not enough to keep it on my shelf. So I, I gave that one three stars. Another three star for me was Alex, uh, by Pierre Lemaitre. I just recently read this for Thriller-a-thon and this is a fun book. Let me just be clear. Like I really enjoyed flipping the pages. I read this really quickly. It's about a, a woman who is kidnapped, put into a tiny cage, and her kidnapper just wants to watch her die. And that's all. That's all. Um, and it is definitely a page turner. But the way that the female body was talked about in here made me kind of want to throw up. It was just overly sexualizing a girl that didn't need that. It, it, even reading the whole thing, um, yeah. It, it never really needed that and I didn't enjoy that. I also don't like detective stories. I still don't. I'm still looking. I'm still hopeful that I'll find a detective series that I like, uh, but this was not it, sadly. Um, I still love this author. I will read anything that this author writes. So it's not like I'm abandoning him, just this book. Okay, next up is The Hours. This is a very beautifully written book. There is nothing wrong with this book. It won the Pulitzer Prize. Um, it just wasn't quite for me. This is very stream of consciousness 
very much inspired by Virginia Woolf. We follow Virginia Woolf and two other women, one woman in present day who's throwing a party for a friend, and another woman who who's in the 50s or 40s, I think it's 50s, um, and it's her husband's birthday and she's baking him a cake. And I, I found it just too stream of consciousness. But the thing is, is that that is exactly what I was picking up. I knew what I was picking up when I grabbed this off of my shelves. So I really can't fault the book for it. But in the end, my feelings towards the book were, it's gorgeously written. Anyone who loves Virginia Woolf, oh my goodness, please pick up this book. I don't adore Virginia Woolf. I, I mean, I loved A Room of One's Own, let's get it straight, but I don't love her fiction really. Um, so yeah, I gave this one three stars as well, so that can go off of my shelves. Oh, this one surprised me. I was so surprised that I didn't really enjoy Hotel on the Corner of Bitter and Sweet. In this book we're following a man who uh, shows up at this hotel because its contents are filled with um, Japanese um, families, um, their, their belongings, and one of his best friends when he was little kind of va vanished. She was sent to an internment camp um, and he is looking for her belongings there. And I thought that I'd feel a lot more in this book, but I never felt close to any of the characters and I'm a very, like, I'm definitely someone who will cry. Like, I, I love to cry, and I thought this one would do that for me. I um, I really thought this was going to pull at the heartstrings, but it didn't pull at anything in the end for me. However, I know a lot of people who adore this book immensely. So don't let me put this, uh, put you off of this book, because a lot of people love it. Another World War II-ish book. The Aftermath by Riddy and Brooke. This is about a family who um, join their their father, who's a British officer in Germany after the war is done. And they go to live in a house that Germans uh, live in and still live in and they all live together. I was amazed by the prose and the writing itself was really beautiful specifically in atmospheric um ways the, he she i think iridian is a woman she was able to paint a picture of what post-war germany looked like in a way that was so vivid gorgeous 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 but the characters, again, didn't do anything for me. I did not feel close to them. I also thought it was going to be really about the dynamics between the Germans living in this house and then the British family that live in this house. They've all lost people that they love because of the war. How tense would that be? I didn't really find it all that tense. I imagine them like working through all of that, but I, I didn't really feel like they actually spent enough time together to work through a lot. So it was fine. It had some pluses and minuses and it landed at three stars for me. So that's gonna go. Oh, this one is a DNF. Um, and that is Cavalier and Clay by Michael Chabon. Again, winner of the Pulitzer Prize. I thought I was gonna love it. Um, I... Uh, there uh, again like the hours there's nothing wrong with this book I just couldn't connect to it um it, it was one of those stories where the storyline would start to go in one direction you're like oh my god I'm so excited because all of this 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 can happen and you started to get excited about um the way the storyline was gonna go and then it was like it switched or just dropped and I was always so disappointed when that happened. So after several chapters of that happening, I was like, I'm I'm kind of disappointed um, by the storyline. The writing is beautiful, but the storyline itself, I was like, oh, I wanted it to do this. And I, it, I just feel like there was a disconnect between me 
and the writer and his his vision for his story and he has every right to have a vision for his story so I, I didn't you know actually write this or anything because I ended up DNFing it but um yeah it just didn't do anything for me oh my god Blood Orange by Harriet Ticey this was a proof it's out now but I don't recommend it sadly Blood Orange is about a lawyer who's representing her first um, homicide case, I believe, um, where she's representing a woman who killed her husband and says, I killed my husband. She thinks there's more going on to it than that. I thought that was going to be the storyline. The actual storyline was more about the lawyer and her stupid affair that she was having and um, she's cheating on her husband even though she has a little kid and I I I thought she was ridiculous she drinks an insane amount if this was my lawyer and I had killed my husband well maybe I would deserve that lawyer but I I would want a new lawyer this is a bad lawyer and I just don't understand I I don't know you know reputations for lawyers and they're so well known for their work ethic and it's just it goes against everything that I've ever thought about lawyers and maybe that's my preconceived notions of them but until I hear and like meet lawyers that aren't like that and are like alcoholics cheating on their husbands like don't have their life together um yeah I'm gonna demand that my books kind of fit that picture just doesn't make any sense to me like you would be fired from your job if you literally didn't do it <laughs> and it, it never showed her doing her job oh I hate this book okay I'm gonna put it down goodbye blood orn oh okay another I've got a DNF here um I didn't know if this was gonna work for me or not it, it didn't sadly it's a winter's promise by Crystal Dubois and um, this is from France and it is um, YA fantasy it's meant to be like the Harry Potter of France and I did not feel that and maybe that's probably the problem is that people you know compare it to Harry Potter maybe people shouldn't do that but I didn't enjoy it this is about a girl who lives in a world in which she has certain powers like she can touch something and then read the story behind that object and the people who own it um and she can walk through mirrors and um there are all of these different worlds and she is married off to a man who lives in a very very violent world her world is very peaceful and his is incredibly violent there's a man that she was married off to I felt like the trope of like guy who's really aloof and kind of rude turns into your hero like the best guy ever I thought that trope was going to happen and I think that is the, the most dangerous trope for young girls to be reading and now I didn't finish it so I don't know if that's what ended up happening I felt like that was what was going to happen um, I just think we need to do better by our teenage daughters with that trope again I don't know if this was going in that direction but I could feel I thought it was going in that direction and I was just like I can't support that um, maybe it didn't go in the, that direction I missed a bunch of stuff but I, I also found the pacing slow I wasn't enjoying it as much and I didn't feel as um, I didn't feel like it was incredibly magical I wanted it to be more magical considering it's fantasy in like magical worlds but whatever it's too bad I was looking forward to that one but life um okay and then the last one is the Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry um, I was just uh, I wanted to connect with what the message was in this book this is very much a book about science and science's relationship with religion 
and we're following a woman who has moved to this tiny town uh, because she's heard that there is this serpent living there um, this like magical serpent that lives in the water and um, so she moves there for a bit and and meets all of these um, people in the town and she hurts about her relationship with these people um, and she has different beliefs than most of the people in this town she's incredibly independent and um, I I just didn't connect with any of the characters in the end and I wasn't pulled into that theme of like nature uh, you know or science versus religion I just didn't and I wanted to um, I also wanted more for the storyline of this little the little boy she has a, a son in this book and they both move together after um, the father dies and uh, I thought the son storyline was going to be like really big in here but it really wasn't that was a shame so those are the books that I I am unhauling. I'm really happy to have these off of my shelves. You know, some of these were really good books, but just didn't do it for me, if you know what I mean. And then others I just I just had to abandon because they were driving me crazy. Um, let me know in the comments below what book you have unhauled off of your shelves lately that you were like, I am so happy to see you go. Because we all have those books and we all have those moments. Let me know what yours is. And I will talk with you soon. Okay, bye guys.